In a previous video, I showed you, how I made a reflow soldering hot plate, from a regular clothing iron. And it works pretty great. The only issue is, it uses mains AC voltage, which I don't feel super comfortable to work with. So I tried low voltage DC approach. The idea is simple, when you apply power to both ends of a conductor, it generates heat. So if we make a PCB, that has a very long trace, and apply voltage to its end terminals, it should generate enough heat, to reflow a PCB. Key things to note here, is that different solder paste has different melting point. And since my last experiment, 200 to 220 degrees Celsius should be sufficient, for the solder paste that I use. So regular FR4 PCB is not a suitable option. But, aluminium PCBs are made to withstand high temperatures, and it spread the heat evenly, throughout the entire surface. So I asked the engineer at PCB Bay, how high it can go? And they confirmed, it can easily handle 240 to 260 degrees Celsius. Also, thanks to Carls, for putting this idea, into test. So I started designing the circuit. This will be the heated bed. An online calculator shows that, the trace resistance will be 3 ohms, and at 24 volts, it will draw about 200 watts of power. Which I think should be sufficient enough. Then I designed the controller circuit. I will use this TT GO T display module, since it has a built-in TFT display. Along with MAX 6675 IC, with K-type thermocouple. There are two MOSFETs, to control the heat bed, and a small cooling fan. After designing the PCB, I head over to PCB Bay, for manufacturing the PCB. PCB Bay is one of the largest PCB manufacturers from China. And huge thanks to them for sponsoring my projects. I also found this RGB rotary encoder, on the PCB Bay gift shop, which I used in my project. This looks beautiful in black solder mask. Let's see if it actually works. Using a multimeter, I measured the trace resistance, and it's 4 ohms. Which is slightly bigger than the previously calculated value. Let's test the maximum temperature it can reach. So at 24 volts, it draws about 7 amps of current, and the temperature rises to 172 degrees Celsius, before one of the wires falls apart. Because when the board heats up, it also increases the temperature on the wire solder joints. After soldering all the components, this is how the controller board looks like. This is the code for the project. It uses PID based temperature controlling, which I will show you in a moment. Currently I have two types of solder paste. One is this 183 degree SNPB and the other one is 138 degree lead free type. You can use these reflow profiles, if you use the same type, or set up a new profile, based on the solder paste that you are using. The reflow profile generally provided by the manufacturer, or can be found online. To understand how the PID algorithm works, and how to tune it for reflow profile, check out my previous video, on the same topic. Also, follow me on Instagram, to get regular project updates. Let's see it in action. After powering it up, we come to the screen. Here we can see the current temperature, the heater and the fan states. Then we can choose the reflow profile from here. In the setup we can see more options, such as P, I and D values, reflow profile details etc. The reflow process starts, when we press the start button. Here you can see the graph, based on the reflow profile, that we have set in the code. Then the heater starts, and the PID algorithm starts controlling the temperature. The white line represents the current temperature. And, as you can see, it pretty much follows the defined graph. So, the PID works perfectly. I also 3D printed a case for the controller board, and this little button caps. After putting them on, our project is complete. 
So, it's time to reflow some PCBs. Hope you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up if you do, share this video and subscribe to get more interesting project like this. See you in the next one.